my YouTube, for some reason, Atlas's video did not take during the recording. So, you'll be able to hear him, but you can't see him for this video. So, Atlas's video portion will be played by a picture of Syndrome from The Incredibles. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Generation Dan, a weekly podcast with uh, three comedians of three different generations, brought to you by Burns Secret Big and Tall, where the secret is nobody's tall. I'm Atlas Novak. I'm Dino the Genetic Marvel. And with us today from the Doodles Live uh, radio station, please welcome Jim Eaton. Hey, good morning there, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? Good. Welcome to the show, Jim. Thank you. Uh, uh, Nick is not here today as uh, he, he's, he's dealing with uh, shit because shit happens. Um, mm. Yeah. And uh, I so... just want to say Vern's big and tall <laughs> was a great line because <laughs> honestly, every fat guy who has to shop at a big and tall is like, well, I'm tall too. So it's not, yeah, I'm not yeah. just fat. That is fantastic. Jim, you're, you're incredible. Do you know how tall are you? I'm six foot. I'm just shy of six foot two. Okay. Does that count as tall at a big and tall place? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I have to get, like, uh, uh, I would get, if possible, like, if I get a t-shirt, I have to get, like, a triple XL T, which is 3XL, but also a longer shirt. Yeah. So, I'm, like, all torso. It's weird. But... He's all torso, no tits. <laughs> no yeah. tits. That's the, that's, that's the Marvel part, right? Uh, but, yeah. No, that's... Your legs, uh, your legs are short, like... Um, I have the same thing because I my uh, waist is actually longer than my um, my legs. Yeah, yeah. So, so thought, wear, you wear your pants lower and everything, and people are like, "No, no, you should wear it higher." I'm like, "No, go fuck yourself. I don't want to do that." Uh, it's, wait, it's weird. Wait, your waist is like it's no, no. It's essentially just lower. So essentially, your torso from shoulders to where oh. you wear your pants looks oh, a lot longer gotcha. than it's supposed. But it's just you know, body types and everything are different, right? The best I've seen was I was in the States and I went to a place because I ripped my pants and I found a big and tall and I'm like, I'm just going to go there and grab some stuff. And uh, the one guy, he was, a, he was a bigger gentleman, but he was fairly short. And I was like, hey, what's the biggest thing you have here? He goes, leather jacket. And it was 6XL. And at the time, I was uh, probably a little smaller than I am right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I put it on and I was like, I could like move my arms like this. And the jacket wouldn't move. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what kind of a monster? Where is this? He's like, we got a guy. He comes in once a year, yeah. and he just cleans us out of everything 6XL. And I'm like, how? Like, He's like, he's round. He's just a circle. He's a circle that walks around. And I'm like, Is, is he like a power a lifter? Life. Right? Because like power lifters kind of turn into a bicep. Right? But it, it, yeah. It can be. That's the thing is, when you're not tall – it gets very uncomfortable the more weight you gain, right? Like, so really short guys that are heavy, they're not actually that heavy because they're short. But at the same time, you look at them and you're like, you look like a circle. <laughs> like, just with hands and feet sticking out the ends. Yeah, I, I like to think of myself as I create my own orbits, actually. Yeah, you know, if I, I got to be careful if I, if I walk too slow, um, objects will just start going circling around me, you know, randomly. <laughs> I have definitely done similar bits, Jim. That's that yeah. is fair. Yeah. Well, when the pandemic started, I was 450 pounds, and now I'm down to around 360. Oh, that's um, cool. It is, you know, the, and the thing is, I'm making jokes where I'm like, I've lost like the weight of a prepubescent adult or a very large dog, uh, but I'm still fat as hell. Um, so it's kind of it's weird in that fashion because <laughs> yeah. I'm still humongous. Yeah, I went through a similar situation. I was actually um, like 525 pounds was my heaviest. Oh, wow. Ugh. And I had the uh, gastric uh, stapling surgery. Where they, yeah. And uh, I was like, one of the first time my parents had Kaiser, because I was like 19, I was 18 years old. Or, you know, I was in, and um, the uh, uh, um, Kaiser didn't do them. I, just, I was like one of their experiments, the Kaiser, current day. And... Um, so they did it, and then what happened is I, I just was thinking that everything would change. You know, after I had the, bi the bypass surgery, I thought, like, oh, my life is going to be really good after I lose all this weight. But, you know, it turned out it wasn't. So the uh, it was just regular life, 
<laughs> and I wasn't, you know, and, um, and I just started drinking soda pops and kind of gained most of the weight back. Mm. And, um, cause I, I, you know, I'm a bus driver, so I, I'm sitting down a lot, but at the time it's kind of funny cause I actually went, lost all that weight to go into the air force. Really? And, Whoa. Yeah. And, um, and when I was, my brother and I both joined the air force at the same time, but, um, when I got the opportunity to get out of the Air Force, I just left because I couldn't stand. It. I just was like, you know, anyhow, I couldn't deal with the, all the, you know, you know. So anyhow, so I just left as soon as I, they got. I got an opportunity to get out. So, and, so let it be yeah. known that Jim Eaton yeeted himself out of the Air Force. Yeah. <laughs> well, my plan was, I thought the best thing to do was, I thought my my best service to serve the Air Force was I could uh, swallow up a bunch of helium. You know, and just yeah. kind of make myself like a balloon and like uh, go into, uh, you know, at that time there wasn't any, luckily there wasn't any wars, but my plan was if we had to invade a country, I'd fill myself up with helium and just kind of like hold onto the power lines and drag myself into the enemy territory. So it's like a weather balloon, you're going, he's over there. There's a guy <laughs> over there. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But luckily we didn't have, you know, because it, 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 I'm sure I could have short, shortened the war up quite a bit. You know, what, when was this? In that. Yeah. Like what year was many, this? Many, many. But when they, when they weren't into, the Air Force wasn't into having their people fill themselves up with helium and then walk, you know, pull themselves along on, Missed on power. Missed opportunities. Yeah. Missed opportunities. Yeah. yeah, they just, they don't understand. They don't, they're not creative. Have you not seen Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying yeah. to be Violet Beauregard, but not Blue. <laughs> yeah. You know, they don't watch enough TV. And that's the other thing, too, is I actually got in trouble because I was security police. And the, uh, I was, um, <laughs> God, I'm lucky I didn't end up in jail because I was standing guard on this, on this fence, and there's nothing, there's this fence. Mm. And then way off in the distance, there's a, at that time, it was classified B one B bomber, Ooh. but it was covered up. And so, uh, so the sergeant calls me up. He's all, "Hey, well, how do they want to know if I was awake?" Basically, he was talking to me, asking me all these questions, like two or three in the morning. So uh, he starts asking me. Uh, so everything's going okay. And uh, I got, a, I'm crazy. I got a crazy mind. So the uh, he goes, um, yeah, "Yeah, it's kind of weird." The the guys came and they took the airplane. For a test flight. Oh my and, God. Um, <laughs> he's all wet. And, uh, yeah. and uh, so I go, yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of weird that the, they would hire people that don't speak English to fly, fly an airplane, oh. you know, be a pilot. Oh my and God. I think they're Russian or something. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Pretty soon there's all, all these cars at my gate. <laughs> They took me in, and I got interrogated by these guys, which is called the OSI, which mm -hmm. is, and then, which, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, it's Oscar Goldman, and then maybe they're going to make me the $6 million man, and the, um, <laughs> and then, um, and when I was, I was going to, I went to Santa Barbara City College before this, yeah. and there was somebody coming around registering people to, to vote, and so I registered to vote under the other and wrote the words chaos party. In honor of my hero Max Smart, you know, get smart. Yeah. And, and the uh, internet and um, so anyhow, but so the, these OSI guys, I'm in there for like three or four hours. They got me sitting in there. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry, Jim. This is he this broke is classic Dino. army yeah. shenanigans, and yeah. I love it. I uh, love yeah. it. And then the um, so wait when they were interrogating you and they're like wait d did you hijack the plane and you're like no but I missed it by that much. <laughs> I, I wasn't I didn't think of that because I was kind of I was actually kind of scared and um and so they wanted to know what this chaos party was. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. It just goes to show you even without the internet, shenanigans can happen, people. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> shenanigans, shenanigans have happened since the beginning of time, I think. Is it? The yeah. best part about that, that story is, is, like, you start off, and it's like, this is going to be funny. He'll appreciate the laugh. And then you're like, maybe me smoke Russian. He goes, what? And you're like, I've gone too far, and now I can't turn back. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, these guy guy guys were a trip. They're, like, uh, they all wear, like, suits. They're not they're not in uniform. They wear suits. Oh, okay. And, um, yeah, they, they wear, I think they were wearing sunglasses inside the, inside the little interrogation room, too. 
Oh, and then, oh, and then another thing I did there is um, I was standing. They had me standing guard, keeping the um, um, when one of the shuttles landed there. There was uh, uh, one of the uh, I, don't, I don't remember which shuttle it landed out at Edwards, and the um, they come running out the press. I had to like keep the press from coming through this big gate, and there's like a whole bunch. And this is when I actually I, and uh, I met Christine Rapaport or whatever her name is. She was a reporter for CNN that was there. A beautiful woman, beautiful woman. And I was kind of like, and um, so anyhow, so they the said, oh, yeah, go about. ahead. And, uh, yeah, she's, she's, I, she's like their foreign correspondent now or something. But the, um, let me see. But I was basically talking to her like I had any chance or anything. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and um, the, uh, and so I, was, and then she's there with her little CNN crew. And I think they had that, I think that that was like their plan. They were going to like try to, like use her to get to me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think, but I don't know. And so they, uh, so the, the, I get this call. Oh, let the. So I said, uh, oh yeah, CNN wants to come in to inter, you know, for the interview. So, uh, so then they, um, <laughs> say, okay, what, you know, whatever. And then they call me up and they go, okay, go ahead and let the press in. So I, I op- and I only let CNN in. <laughs> the <laughs> other guys got really upset. And then because I I was thinking I had CNN on my mind, you know, and then the uh, and then so anyhow, then the guys all the other people started like yelling at me and stuff. So I opened and let them all in. But yeah, <laughs> all kind of, uh, so I'm probably better off that I wasn't in the Air Force, you know, <laughs> that I got out as soon as I could. Are you Who's Christine just... Rappaport? No, then get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Not interested. Uh, okay, that's yeah, uh... see, Fox. This is before Fox even existed. See, oh. they would have had their. You know, they're hotties out there. Then I probably, you know, they probably would have. Their their uh, Aryan goodness or whatever the fuck. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So the, uh, but yeah, no, the, so, yeah. They missed their opportunity on getting in. Oh, and then that same airplane, too, is the, uh, it was famous. Uh, there was a, evidently the toilet froze up or something. When it was what? coming back. Yeah, evidently the, 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 um, the space shuttle. Um, there was all these other guards when I was, before, we're waiting in the briefing that they're, they're talking about the toilet being frozen <laughs> on the plane on the, when it was coming in, that was like one of the things they hadn't, you'd be able to use the toilet for a couple of days on the, uh, on the space shuttle. Oh, so it so froze said, up from lack of use, right? Yeah. So I said, yeah. maybe it'll like uh, heat up on the reentry and then it'll dump it right on our, uh, right on the, on the, uh, on the runway. And yeah, that's not, Totally unsound logic, though. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of look space, extreme cold, reentry, extreme heat. It's not, you know, it's definitely not going to work. But you're like, hey, maybe. It's... Yeah, yeah, and then that's why I think they, because I wanted to be on the. There was like these different guard groups, and one of them you got to sit. You got to sit in this like uh, armored vehicle. And you had like these thirty cal machine guns and uh, <laughs> all kinds of weapons and stuff. And I thought that'd be kind of cool to be in that because you're out in the salt, out in the this dry lake bed. But of course, they thought I was crazy, so they would they gave me a thirty. I'm surprised they even gave me bullets for my thirty eight. And then you know, I had to go stand up. Yeah, I bet member of the chaos party. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, that's see. This is the thing: is you only get some stories out of people from their military service much later because it's it's a it's an, a, a difficult experience from everyone that I've talked to has said like it can be very trying and and traumatic right so it's like you kind of have to figure it out before you're willing to talk about it like for my dad so I'm Greek uh, Jim and my dad uh, well in Greece they still have the draft so there's a mandatory service and when my my father was young he went into the military and uh i i asked him some questions and this was uh i was a little older so we were like had a real conversation about it and uh i said how long did you have to be because he was the youngest son and he said oh it was three years and my mom we were eating and uh and my mom's like well three years and six months and my dad kind of dropped his his fork and was like uh and i go why was it an extra six months and it turns out that just before he was done his his mandatory service, he was like, "I'm out of here. No way am I sticking around." Uh, one of uh, his superiors was waking them out up with a bullhorn, and he came closer to my dad to try and wake him up with the bullhorn. And my dad said, "You do that again, I'm gonna kick the crap out of you." And sure enough, the next day, the guy put the bullhorn right to my dad's ear, 
and let it go off to wake him up. And my dad grabbed his own helmet and beat the crap out of the guy. So he had to go to jail for six months. Oh my God. Because for hitting his superior. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what dad? He's like, wow, you did, well, you know, these things, you're young. And I'm like, listen, because so I'm the youngest of five. So when I was having this conversation, my dad's in his in his 60s or late 50s, early 60s. Uh, and I'm, you know, in my mid 20s. And I'm like, for my life, you were a well-adjusted grown-up that had his own business and had things together. So it's good to hear those kind of stories of uh, shenanigans. Yeah, that's definitely like um, it, it, the 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 crazy stuff that your parents get into when they were young. You never really hear about until you're an adult. Because when you're a kid, they're trying to like show this air of like I'm the parent, I'm in yep. charge, I know how shit works, and it's fun to learn in your twenties that no one has their shit together. Um, yeah, at yeah. all, at all. Yeah. Like, like I had a show in Oceanside, uh, not last week, but the week before, and my dad, who's retired, was like, "Hey, I'm bored. Can I come with you?" And I was like, "Yeah, free audience. I'll pick you up on uh, after work. Come with me." So I kind of just let him talk for the whole time, and my dad doesn't talk for the most part, and just letting him go, he kind of told me what happened between when he graduated high school to when he met my mom, which was like, you know, 25 years or so. And ah. the, the amount of stupid that he got into was so crazy that I'm like, why weren't you telling me this when I was a teenager? And he's like, cause I needed to make sure that you would be well adjusted. And if you knew this, then you, you would like try to emulate it. And I'm like, I don't think I would emulate driving like your friend driving his half ton pickup through the side of the house you were renting in aspen colorado turning to the girl you're with and saying so would you like to come in for a drink i would never do that you know it's a good move though yeah <laughs> well that that wasn't him it was his friend who they affectionately nicknamed the field mouse because he was a little, little dude um and I actually got to meet, meet the field mouse because uh, he, he still lives in Colorado. And uh, when I was in high school, we were going to look at colleges there. And my mom and I stayed with him for a night, like, in his guest room. And he's the most, like, suburban, boring guy now. <laughs> but, <That's awesome. laughs> yeah, but it's just funny. He's, like, got the really thick mustache and the glasses. And he's like, so uh, here's the guest room. Bathroom's down the hall. I'm like, I literally know all the crazy shit you did <laughs> field mouse like yeah. i know what's up this is the thing is when you call someone out yeah you're like hey i heard a story about you yeah. and they go what, what yeah did, what did you hear <laughs> what did you hear and you're saying like mm, something might not be up to par here you're putting on a little bit of a different show a right? ruse yeah like i i found out Within the same year that my dad was at Woodstock and my mom used to go to Studio 54 in the 70s. Bring that Whoa. shit up earlier. That's so crazy, right? Oh, this is this is the thing is you – I feel uh, like – so Victoria and I, uh, we want to have kids. But at the same time, like there's been just things come up and yeah. life happens and stuff. So we haven't had any uh, so far. Uh, we still, we still talk about, it, we still thinking about it and everything, but at the same time, like we look at it and you're like, I feel like becoming a parent, you're like, I just don't want to screw them up beyond repair, you know? Yeah. So you're like, I'm going to give them just the bare minimum of like sunshine and lollipops. Theoretically, that might make them a good person and not a complete asshole. Because like, by the time you have kids, I feel like you realize that you're like, man, I was a dick. <laughs> Let's try and not do that again. You know? I, I think in general, people tend to screw up their kids differently than how their parents screw them up because you're trying to not do what your parents did. They try. Yeah. I believe that they try. They have a good intention of not making them turn out like themselves, but I don't know. So, Jim, you said you're you're a bus driver. That's your regular yeah, location, I'm a bus right? Driver. Yeah, the, um, well, but, you know, talking about kids, I, I used, my ex-wife had a son from her first marriage, mm -hmm. and uh, he's luckily off to college now, but, um, when he was like in junior high, I like to play, I used to like to play Grand Theft Auto, but I, <laughs> I lost my, my PlayStation and I would like to steal in the Grand Theft Auto five. I'd like to steal buses and drive the buses around the different cities, you know, when, and, when you yeah. still like stick to the route or whatever. 
yeah, that's... yeah. We'll stop and try to pick up, you know, stop and pick up the hookers, you know, with the, uh, and then try to find a place. But anyhow, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, so I go, you know, this might be a, you know, good way to teach Shane how to, uh, you know, the the how big cities operate. So then, as a junior high kid, I got him starting to play Grand Theft Auto, and uh, we're, <laughs> which I thought was a wise thing, trying to teach kids, you know, because like, hey, big cities are mean places. You got to learn how to operate. But I forgot, like, well, you don't actually go around shooting people and uh, picking up hookers to build up our, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, my ex-wife got a little mad at me for that, but, you know. But he, well, he, he was having fun playing Grand Theft Auto as well. Absolutely. I think you did the right thing, Jim. So, Jim, do you drive, like, a city bus, a tour, well, or? I'm actually, I've, I've been a bus driver because uh, since the early 80s I've been a bus driver. I started out um, taking a- Olympic athletes from, they were doing the, um, in 1980, the 84 Olympics, Yep. The uh, the water, all the like rowing events and stuff like that, right where the athletes were housed in Santa Barbara, at, at at the University of Santa Barbara, and they were going up to Lake Casitas where the um, so I was basically shuttling the athletes back and forth, and then also the athletes. Oh wait, was the athletes that were on the um, on um, the uh, at the bicycling events? They were all on, they were housed in Santa Barbara as well. And then they went to this place called the Velodrome in the San Fernando Valley, and um, but the uh, and then I went to work for Greyhound, and I was at Greyhound for quite a while, and then the longest and the best company I ever worked for was the Santa Barbara, the the local transit system in Santa Barbara, and then um, because like at Greyhound, the weird stuff that happens is kind of scary, because it's it's dealing with people that just got out of jail. Yeah, or like. Yeah. Isn't there like yeah, a he, thing where they'll like try and uh, most of their states will be like, here's a ticket for California homeless person, get the fuck out. Yeah, the Chicago and Los Angeles were doing that actually, yeah. and then um, there was a, a little thing where people were actually kind of living on the buses from Chicago to Los Angeles because yeah. they, they Chicago is some place in Chicago I, I I never saw where, and then we were on strike for quite a while, and then when I came back from the strike, it it wasn't there anymore, but the um, but the the people would basically go to Chicago. They you know from Chicago they would be on the bus for three days. They get to Los Angeles. They go over to the Fred Jordan Mission over there by the Greyhound Station in Los Angeles, and they would give them a ticket back to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> and they, <laughs> so these people were just like kind of living. On, yeah, that that was a trip. And then what are you know, doing with your George Foreman grill? Shut the fuck up and just. just... <laughs> Yeah. Leave me alone. All right, I'm going to Chicago. I'm there to make a new life. You know, three days later. Yeah. Didn't I see you on the bus to Chicago? No, you didn't. No, no, no. Different George Foreman grill. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think that they had to put on like a disguise to get it. I know, but like after a while, you start to recognize them. They start showing up in different hats and shit. Like, yeah. Well, that's okay. So here's a question for you, Jim. Is as a bus driver, uh, any sort of uh, transportation driver, I feel like you're uh, you're taught to have on a a barrier between interacting with people to a certain degree right uh have do you have any times where you've dropped that barrier and had a good laugh with one of the passengers is that ever all the time i get like because that's what i would have like um i i try to entertain the passengers as as part as the part of the trip was uh the you know part of their fare they would get entertained and um which is kind of fun to do because then also you can tell stupid jokes on the on the PA system and then nobody and then you know they're you've got a forced audience, you know. Captive yeah. audience, you know what? It's definitely some you can get some great feedback from that situation, right? Yeah, yeah. can. And then the um like, and then the weird stuff that happens the um like at Greyhound. I think the strangest thing that ever happened to me on Greyhound was a um I was driving this going from Flagstaff to Los Angeles mm-hmm. and uh, it's in the middle of the night it's you know it left Flagstaff at like anyhow so you're driving the interstate 40 at in the middle of the night two three in the morning and um so I'm driving along and I notice there's a, somebody laying on the floor of the bus and so hey are you all right <laughs> and he and then um he's all yeah I'm trying to see I want to see if there's any UFOs and there, the sky from the- is really so I said, "Well, yeah, just come on up." And I let him sit in the um, in the in the st- stairwell of the bus while I'm driving. And you know, he can not keep me awake anyhow. Yeah. So uh, so he starts telling me all these stories about how um, the uh, 
the aliens are after him because he's he's aware he's had some proof that President Kennedy was the only president that wasn't an alien. Because he was Catholic. What's the, the, the... Uh, I, I I he I anyhow. So he's telling me about all this stuff. So all I'm thinking about is great. This guy could be telling me the truth, and all of a sudden is is you know alien because you're out there on 40 there's nothing just yeah. desert you know yeah and so so i get the bus into los angeles and uh i parked the bus and then the guy he, he went back to his seat and uh, he ran out of the bus and just ran and out into the you know part of the the it's on the but greyhound station at that time was at seventh and decatur and it's kind of in the weird industrial part of downtown los angeles yeah. And um, he just running, and <laughs> I kind of wonder, so, what, you know. Well, like, I, 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 like I, into the wilderness, yeah. he's like, I'm out, and just took off. I, I, yeah. I know he's, I, like, I, running from something, but in my head, I just imagine, like, Charlie and the Chocolate, like, I've got a golden ticket, and he just runs off. <laughs> yeah, he was heading for somewhere, but the, uh, yeah, I think he was heading. Yeah, and then, um, then I had another guy, actually, in Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. and um, he gets on the bus, and um, and these people only show up at night for some reason. And I happened to notice he had a frying pan, like one of these cast iron frying pans, is like a necklace. A necklace. And, and then he had as a necklace. Yes. You need a strong neck for that. Cast iron iron pans are fucking heavy. That's uh... yeah, they are. He had like a thing, and then he had something on his back too. It was like around, and then um. Oh okay. And, he had a bulletproof uh, vest made out of frying pans. That's what he had. Yeah, that's oh, what I, I think I got a bulletproof vest, and I said, hey, I like your bulletproof vest. He didn't really say anything to me. And then, you know, I could have just imagined this. I, but I swear his eyes were completely black. Like, there was no whites in his eyes. And, he had black uh, eyes like a doll's eyes. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, and then, yeah, he, he kind of, I was keeping an eye on him, the, yeah, the whole time. And, um... <laughs> okay, hear me yeah, out. Just, so he, he has a bulletproof vest, I assume another frying pan on his back. Right, I, you know, I I couldn't tell what it was that was on his back because it was underneath. He had a jacket on. So oh, okay, he would need a jacket. counterweight. Yeah. right. It only yeah. makes sense. I'm counterweight. thinking he has like another frying pan on his back, and he. And that's what I, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it was another, but it it nothing really humped out of his unless it was like a skillet or something that was flat. Maybe, that works. but like th- think like he's able to take it off, and then he's got like frying pan nunchucks, right? So <laughs> that's Viable. that's kind of brilliant where it goes from defense to offense. Yeah. yeah, and then he was going somewhere, and um, he was going to somewhere. He was going on a long trip. I don't remember where it was exactly. Mm-hmm. They, he was going across the country because he switched to another bus in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you need some characters on there. And then I had another guy. Uh, this is one of the prisoners I picked up, and I picked him up as a um, and stopped him, and going down Interstate Five. All of a sudden, he just starts thinking that his eyes were poked. Somebody poked his eyes out. Okay. And, and I go, uh, no, your eye, you still have your eyes, sir. You still have your eyes. And he goes, you don't understand. I can't see. My eyes have been poked out. <laughs> or, or, like, my eyes, I can't see. Is, my he eyes, like, my... is he in pain, like he's holding, clutching his eyes? Or is he just like, I just can't see? Uh, no, he, uh. he just was saying his eyes, his eyes, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes like this yeah. and uh he was screaming at me and so i i pulled the bus over and and i got off in um um oh in king county but it's a uh, coinga junction there there's like a the bus stops at a carl's jr and so i said i i can't have this guy on the bus so i ended up yeah. called the police and then the police talked to him and uh, they're all well he's he's like had some bad reaction to something some kind of drug or something why don't you take him to los angeles and i go well he he stands right next to me, screaming his eyes. Yeah, oh, my eyes, my eyes. And I, it's unsafe. Yeah, and the cops didn't want. The cops are all you sure you don't want to take him to Los Angeles because I really don't want to deal with him here. And so I, and then uh, they ended up calling an ambulance. And <laughs> but the uh, but yeah, it was a uh, yeah, that was kind of a weird thing. And um, I wonder if like my dad, my dad was an eye doctor before he retired so i just like to imagine there's that one patient who my eyes my eyes and he's like yes i know that's why you're here can you please <laughs> shut the fuck up and sit down in a chair so i can exam my eyes 
that only stands to reason that it would have happened because people yeah. freak out when they can't see. Yeah, right? of course. That's yeah. only no people are like pissed off. Like a lot of his patients are just like fucking fix my eyes already. He's like, okay, well, geez. that's the thing is it's the same thing. Like eyes and teeth are one of those things where you're like they will just eventually malfunction over time. These just it happens, right? Mm -hmm. But it's such a piss off because you you it's it's so life disturbing. Mm -hmm. when one of those falters so if you suddenly have pain in your eye you just i don't want to deal with anything or anything you have a toothache same thing i don't want to eat i don't want to talk to anyone just you know yeah. but that's that's why people start to freak out i i've mentioned that like people get hulk powers when they have to poop i think when you have like extreme tooth pain you'll get there you'll get hulk powers okay. yeah i feel like that there's definitely uh like one of the things that I do is if I'm ever in pain or anything like that is you squeeze the, the muscle right between your index finger and your thumb. And it, it kind of gives you a little comfort with that. Like it releases some, like a, it's like an acupressure type thing. Oh, okay. Right. So if you're like anxiety or something, you just press it onto it and it just kind of makes you feel like just a little relaxed, like nothing too, too crazy. But at the same time, you're like, you know what? Knowing that kind of stuff I found as I get older has been very, very helpful where I'm like, I'm at a wedding I don't want to be at. My wife just sees me rubbing my hands to it. She's like, oh, we should go. I'm like, we should really go before I start murdering people. This I like, is, okay, so. well, like every married couple has their little, like, you know, squeeze the hand three times. Like, we got to put a sock in it. Yeah. We got to go. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that is how you keep uh, the relationship alive is being yeah. able to non verbally communicate without other people knowing. Huge. Sometimes you're just like, listen, fuck it. We're leaving. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> yeah. Just walking away. We're done. Um, no, so on, on a Greyhound up here, uh, there was a guy that got beheaded. Uh, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, the guy had mental problems. The guy who, who did the beheading, uh, I believe now is, uh, on parole, but, uh, it was a few years ago. And that's why it's like a lot of people like in the States, that's a, a viable tra way of transport, right? It's just jumping on a bus and going one state over, right? Whereas in Canada, it's a long way between provinces like it's, it's yeah. a long drive to get one place to another so as soon as you leave uh the greater toronto so as soon as you're about three hours north of me you're like it's gonna be a long time before you hit a proper city where you can say get a flight back or whatever like it's yeah. it's gonna be 10 12 hours right it's pretty rough but yeah so I wait to... the guy who did the beheading was he just like hang on one second guy who's screaming at me please let me go to the cargo hold where i have a gu guillotine stash and uh, uh, no, no, no. uh with 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 a, a knife that he had on him that's it was jesus it was christ do you know yeah, how man. many like muscles and bones and sinew and like is in the human neck listen he he like started the job people realized what was going on bus pulled over when everyone started flipping the fuck out as you Everybody, should as, <laughs> as you should i think which is that's fair that's a fair response right yeah um anyways uh everyone eg exited and the driver closed locked him in there so he was by himself with the body and by the time the cops came the guy kicked open the door and threw the the head out and it was like oh my wow. okay, so, so it wasn't like i i assumed like he had like a samurai sword on board and like one quick slash to the <laughs> or something i don't know Long-term yeah. crazy. It wasn't okay. a, a snap decision. Uh, uh, it, poof, it so was, he kills him, and then he's like, do, 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 saw the guy's neck. Yeah, the guy's Don't, <laughs> don't throw But it. that's the thing. is like, that's always freaked me out about taking the bus. We've taken a bus from here. We took a mega bus uh, to – I've taken to New York, and I've taken to Philadelphia. Okay. And, like, there are always – like, I'm with my wife, and at the same time, I'll be like – She's like, oh, we'll go that way. I'm like, no, we won't. We're going to go over to this side of the bus and just stay away from some weird-ass people that take it. And you're like, I get it. It's it's cost-effective. But, yeah, I can only imagine the people that you run into, Jim. That... I've never – Oh, yeah, yeah. All kinds, of, all kinds of people. Well, this didn't happen to me. This happened to another uh, driver. Um, it didn't happen to me, pers um, but I was involved in it. I witnessed the, the aftermath of this. But the um, this guy was signing his bus out of Phoenix – and uh, you have to leave the bus and go to the phone and call. This is, they, they got rid of the central dispatchers, and they all the dispatchers are in t Dallas. So you mm -hmm. have to physically call Dallas, and it takes like 10 minutes to get a hold of these guys and tell them they're leaving. And um, so Thank you for holding. Your call will be yeah. uh, answered in the order it was received. <laughs> Please continue to hold. Shitty pop music. Yeah. And, then you're, and then it stops, and you're like, oh, my God, a person. And it's like, thank you for holding. You're like, fuck. <laughs> 
I do medical records. This comes up all the goddamn time. <laughs> Continue. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, why this guy's on hold, though, uh, a guy who had just gotten kicked out of a rehabilitation, one of these uh, drug rehab centers in downtown Phoenix, yeah. um, got in the bus and just drove it away. Oh. You know, oh. Four, Filled with people? 40 people. Oh, my God. Oh, that is a lot of people, man. Holy shit. Yeah. And I'm and I'm I'm one of the I'm a driver from Los Angeles in the staying at the so I get I get called in from the hotel where I'm staying. You 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 get there and then you're from like a certain area. They mm-hmm. wait until there's something going back. You wait in the right. hotel until there's something going back. But the um, and uh, with an empty bus to take to follow this thing and the but so anyhow so I happen to be there when the when the head of Phoenix was talking to the uh, the Arizona Public, the Department of Public Safety. And um, so uh, he's on speakerphone with him and he goes, uh, the guy, <laughs> the guy uh, the, with the police is all, how far will that thing go before it runs out of uh, fuel? And the guy's all, well, they'll go like 1,200 miles. And um, then the, there's just like, there's silence for, <laughs> for like about a minute. And then they, and they go, I think we're going to have to come up with another plan. And, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Uh, and so anyhow, so I go and I'm, and, um, they, they, the guy, unfortunately, the guy was heading home. Actually, he was actually heading to his house in Fontana in California in Fontana. And, um, so they kind of had an idea that's where he was going. And sure enough, that's where he was. And the sheriff's department was waiting for him and LA County Sheriff's department was waiting for him. And they, uh, unfortunately killed the guy. Jeez, um, dude. yeah, but the, uh, but yeah, he was driving this bus down, uh, yeah, all the way from, and then with 40 people on it, all the way from, <laughs> so, yeah. They're... Okay, what's the advice from from the company to people who are in that situation? Like, is there like a, like, you know, on airplanes, it's got the little card of in case of emergency. Like, yeah. how, what are you expected to do? Like, do you just say, all right, we're just going to go for a drive? Like, just. Yeah, I guess you're, that's all you could really do because, you know, they, you know, and then most of the, you know, I the people, I took the people to a Denny's restaurant mm. and the and then there was representatives from the Greyhound um, company yeah, were there right. to interview them and I'm assuming that they were paying them off or so. I, I don't know what, what exactly they were talking to but they, we went to a Denny's that have like one of these like uh, you know separate little rooms and it yep. was uh it was in Ontario I believe and um the uh and so yeah I just dropped them and, and the uh they seemed to be happy when they got back on the bus, and okay. I took them to Los Angeles. That's but the uh, yeah. and the worst part is, it's like, okay, well now back on the bus, yeah. and we're gonna try this again. Yeah, hands okay? and feet inside your row. Let's go. Let's get that rolling. Let's go. See, now That's I'm thinking, it, like, if you're the the person on the bus that like they got hijacked, and you're out at at the start, and then eventually, like, nothing about the situation changed. You're still on a bus. It's going somewhere. Yeah, it's not where you want to go, but the guy's still driving the bus. I assume he's not running into shit. He's, like, obeying traffic laws and yeah. whatnot. Well, yeah. yeah. And it's going in the general right direction. Yeah, right? So, so you're it's just kinda... like, ah, ah, ah. Well, I guess he had told them that he had to go to, that he was going to Los Angeles. Yeah. I guess he had told the people that he was going to Los Angeles. So I think that they were just all, well, he's, you know, it just seems like somebody in this mad or something. Yeah, so, yeah, so you're just like, ah. Okay, whatever. It's going really, down I'm more surprised that yeah. he was able to drive without a problem. Like a bus is is hard you know, to drive. Like, I know, yeah. Well, it's not the easiest thing to drive. I know, like, it's not as bad as like an 18 wheeler or anything, but it still has its nuances. Like, it's a big machine. It's mm-hmm. you know yeah, just for 40, that. Forty feet long. It's just like driving a forty foot car. Basically, you can't go through drive throughs with it. That's the thing. That's the thing that kind of pisses <laughs> me off actually, because I like to go through in and out drive throughs, uh-huh. and they. In and out's the only one you can actually drive through because because there's no you know, overhang, right? Because a straight, it's got a long straight. It doesn't have a steep turn. Most of the in and outs have. A, they don't have like a. They have a long driveway. Yeah. And except for uh, actually, Kingman, Arizona has a. It's probably changed now because I, I left there 20, 22 years ago, but the Kingman, Arizona has a uh, bus stop. So you have to in yeah. you have to. The, mcdonald's drive-through in kingman and you have to actually drive into the and then you have to back into the to the bus depot 
and then when you leave, you go right through the drive-thru. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but you don't actually buy anything or anything. But you know, that's just the way the that's the way the driveway goes. But. Can I ask you, Jim? Uh, have there been times where uh, you've returned to a place and then realized you've already been there before? Like where oh. you were driving and you're kind of saying, "Going, hey, wait a minute." Oh, I drove through here before, like something. Uh... Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. And then another time, um, my I was at home one other time, and I could have swore I was in Sacramento. Yeah, and that was a weird feeling because uh, I'm like, my friend calls me up, and I'm all like, Joey, he and um, how did you get the number to the hotel here in Sacramento? And he's all, well, no, I'm calling your house. And then I had to look around. I go, I'm in my house. <laughs> so it's like a dissociative thing where you're just like, I, I swear I'm in Sacramento, I think. Well, but like be temperature, smells, uh, thoughts that go through your head, kind of just perfect storm. And you're kind of like, what? Yeah. I'm guessing it's like the same thing where you're like, where's my phone? Google. Like, would, yeah. it, it's like that part of your brain where, where it just doesn't uh, like, you know, all the pieces are there, but it doesn't put them together. Well, it's the same with, yeah. you know, having your glasses up here and going, where are my glasses? Damn glasses, just yeah. have feet of their own, you know? Yeah. It's just... mm -hmm. yeah, and then another time, this is kind of, uh, I was dry, I had this run where I was going from Fresno to San Diego, and, um, Jacking which is San a really Diego. long drive. Yeah. And, um, like, I seem to always work the night. I, I, I kind of prefer working nights, so. Mm -hmm. And um, so all of a sudden, I find myself falling asleep while I'm driving, which is oh, no. kind of happens a lot, you know? And so what you got to do is you got to pull over and walk around the bus a couple of times. It wakes you up. Yeah. So I did that and I still, I go, oh, I'm going to stop and get some so I'm, caffeine or I something. Thought I, was yeah. in, um, I thought maybe I was in Los Angeles somewhere. I thought I was in like the, uh, like, because I pulled over along the side of the road and um, I was, I knew I was in a city. And then, so I get in the bus and I find myself like falling starting to fall asleep again so i go oh i'm gonna stop at this 7-eleven that i knew that was in in the san fernando valley off of san fernando mission road mm -hmm. and so i go well i'm looking for the off ramp i can't find it and then i an exit i get off on the exit pull in and i was in the rest area just outside of oceanside so <laughs> somehow, from los angeles to the basically the grapevine the top of the grapevine to Oceanside without realizing that I had driven through Los Angeles. And that that's kind of <laughs> like I have no recollection of going through uh so, you know. It, it yeah, takes kind of, it takes a lot of there. like fatigue to just not notice LA cuz like you can notice LA traffic yeah. everywhere you go, lots of noise, people suck, shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean that goes for every city, but yes. Yeah. No, but like okay, so one time I did a sleep study where they, they put you in the, you know, CAT scan tube. They go, okay, go to sleep. Uh, super easy, right? And then, like, I, I went in at, like, 11 at night, and at 4 a.m. they wake you up. They're like, okay, we're done. Leave. I'm like, shouldn't I, like, wait till the sun rises or something? No, get out of here. So I got in my car, and I was driving home. I saw two cars that were driving. The entire, literally two cars in, in like, in L.A., and that was the first time I was like, this is what the apocalypse is going to be like. I'm looking yeah. forward to it, I think. <laughs> yeah, it would be, there would be a lot less traffic. Yeah, no, it was, that's it was the good stuff. best part. Like, that's one thing that uh, I would really, if like, I, I've always thought, I'm like, you know what, if, uh, uh, I don't think I could be a bus driver because I would probably kill somebody, but like yeah, a truck driver or something. Uh, yeah, I know, for sure I would kill somebody. There's no mm -hmm. question about that. Like, that's, but um, like a uh, truck driver, I'm like, driving at nighttime, a million times better than driving during the day. Like I see some truckers where there's just inching forward and I'm like, I would lose my goddamn mind. It's already hard enough in like a sedan or something, but like a yeah. giant ass truck where everything, there's like a delay on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so there's a lag on the brakes when you, you air brakes too. There's like, when you hit your hydraulic brake, your brakes in your yeah. car, which are hydraulic, it kind of, the brakes start immediately, but there's a little bit of a lag, like maybe a one second lag when you hit your air brakes before mm -hmm. the brakes actually start to apply. Yeah. Yeah. So and you, also people are re morons when it comes to driving around trucks and buses and things too. Yeah, definitely. Oh Gosh. yeah. Most, but the, the, yeah, the thing is, is like, um, you're always prepared for everything. So I've had people where I, you got to drive in the right 
on the city buses especially because a famous thing that people do all the time the city buses that you got to be prepared for is you'll be driving along and then you're sitting in the right hand lane and then nobody wants to and then there's entrances to, and exits to these you know yeah, shopping side, centers side streets driveway. and parking lots and shit yeah. yeah so what people will do is they'll pass you and mm-hmm. then they'll all of a sudden turn into the uh, into the uh. driveway but occasionally there will be a pedestrian on the on the uh, walk on the on the sidewalk or something yeah. so you got to watch for that so when you see this car going by you, you, you first thing you do is you look for pedestrians on the sidewalk or the mm-hmm. because what they'll do is they'll and then they'll hit, they'll stop their they'll hit their brakes so they and think then, they, and then you they, T-bone a car yeah, yeah. No. the reason why I'm slowing down is because they don't notice the pedestrian that they're mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? so I'll you know the, so they're behind you and they're oh you're driving so slow but you know it's like I'm gonna I may have to stop this thing because you're gonna yeah. you know, pop all of a sudden in front of well, me it, you just can't stop with that much material yeah. right like it's just it's yeah, just too much mass yeah 40,000 pounds so yeah, yeah they're fully loaded it's one of those things for like I remember taking driver's ed and they had you know they make you watch the video from like the 1980s or whatever which generations but uh the (laughs) the the, just the video where they're explaining like how little trucks can see they're like okay here's what what i can see out of the rearview mirror and the other rearview mirror and this is what is actually around the truck and i was like holy shit don't like it's it's not a dave and goliath situation you're not gonna like oh i can no you fuck you you're in a you're in a sedan they're in a truck don't mess with them like just yeah you, you know. a good rule is if you can see the driver they can see you yeah, yeah. no that that's, that's yeah yeah I and that's, them saying that's that. the thing is like like i was raised and you know what jim you can probably attest to this mm-hmm. as, uh, as 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 my senior too was i was raised when you drive a car you're not driving one car you're driving five cars it's your car the car in front of you the car to your right the car to your left and the and car behind, behind you you, you yeah. need to know all what everyone is doing at all times for the safety of your passengers that's it. Oh, yeah, and then the not yeah, and you got to remember the bicycles and the skateboarders and they tend to fuck go. Fuck those people! I hope they <laughs> fucking get die. <laughs> yeah, the, they uh, get die. Okay, that's right. I yeah. hope they get die. I hope they go down to the craft store and they purchase some die so that they can make a t-shirt a different color. I hope they get and die. Hope, and then they <laughs> died it in that shirt. Okay, that's what they're. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, yeah, no, except for there's a lot of paperwork. I'm a I'm a bad speller. If I was a better speller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the barrier here is the the burden of spelling. Hundred yeah. percent, I agree with you. I gotta be a lot more, is... a lot more reckless if I was a worse speller. I um, I thought yeah. that like, as a kid, that spelling would be more important than it was. Like you had spelling tests every oh, yeah. week, and then <laughs> as, like I'm a good speller, but like who cares? You know. Listen, that's the thing about it this way is the entire education system being based on a basic level of communication, which is what spelling is, mm-hmm. okay? That's why it was important. To the time by you were an adult means that the education system is literally 20 years behind in picking up on the fact that spelling, oh yeah, it doesn't even fucking matter anymore. Yeah. Okay? Although I guess that when it the started... That was of all your communication, yeah. right? That, that was the big thing. When the, the fact is, we're going back to pictures, picture drawings. Mm-hmm. This is how I'm going to communicate with a picture. And uh, uh, just yeah. sounds. Okay? Well, it's it's either so, that or like because spell check exists, people just kind of it, it's a muscle that's atrophied over time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. 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 And then too, the like kids today, they're not even teaching them how to cursive write. No. I mean, which, yeah. That I went through a horrible time because I have very poor penmanship. Me too. And like my grammar is horrible. My spell, like typing, has been a godsend. Even though like I'm a two finger bandit when it comes to typing. It doesn't. It's not because I'm not fast. Uh, it's because my fingers are too big and they don't fit on the no. keyboard. I do right? ev- every finger on the right hand and only my index on my left. I have no <laughs> idea why. It's, it's you know just what? yeah. Like when I worked at a bank, if I when I was putting in numbers, one of the things like that I had no problem with doing because it would have the little number pad on the side of every computer, and that's because you know it's banking. Yeah, there's a lot of number input, right? Yeah, but typing still two fingers. I mean, it, it, if you get the, you know, as fast as you needed to, I don't think the, the home row shit really matters. Like, no one really cares for the most part. No. By the way, what I was saying with regards to the pedestrians and everything was uh, that now that there's been a lot of posts uh, online of uh, cyclists complaining about uh, pedestrians walking in the bike paths. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, sweet 
karma because bikes have been such an issue and cars they've been going at it for just as long as time because it's like listen you know that there are other you don't have to ride your bike on the main street just move over one street and there's like no cars just one street over just don't be a dick that's all you have to not be in but, in la and specifically in santa monica bikes are treated as cars they're supposed to ride in the like it's so dumb i'm like what they should they the bike path is good because then they're off to the side they can still like be traffic but you know i hope their airbags don't work and they go flying in through the air when they get hit because they, they, they are bicycles get off the goddamn road okay <laughs> um oh and then in, in regards to penmanship penmanship like you were saying i hold a pen really weird like this it's you weirdo yeah okay it's like school with a guy like that that. that. i was wondering there i knew there was something wrong with you there atlas thanks jim uh 100 i knew i went to school with a guy that held it with the tips of his fingers so it's like this okay that seems like you would get carpal tunnel real fast that's really uh, bad and he was uh, he was a super nerd and he but he wasn't a bad guy he was just really mm -hmm. nerdy it was alan figure Uh, out there Alan. uh, i thought i always thought you're a weirdo but you're not a bad guy no it's like it's the pads of your fingers in that case but like um well, because you remember those little pencil grip things, little rubber things that are supposed to like, yes. teach you? I would just hold around it so nothing ever got fixed. Um, my cousin, shout out to Gemma, writes like this. Like upside down almost. Huh? Yeah. And like she it, she has like really good handwriting. So who cares? Like it, I don't, it really doesn't matter for that part. Um, like really like fancy handwriting or like just decent girl writing? Decent girl writing. But you know what? Still impressive. Yeah. No, like, in my case, I look like, to people listening to this, you have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, to people listening <laughs> to this uh, and not watching on YouTube, think, like, the, the like, Italian holding your, the, the four fingers and the thumb. Someone going, hey! Hey, yeah. So, like that. My cousin, on the other hand, think, like, almost making a fist, but not quite. Like, halfway to a fist. Um with just the pen in there. That's the best way I can describe it. It's very hard to describe. It's like clenching your fist yeah. as it gets more threatening. Yeah, and almost. Then stop. Yeah, stopping, stopping when you're just before the peak. So like, it's like 80% yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, yeah. No. Not not understanding how to... Like, I had so many notebooks with just cursive writing in it, practicing over and over, and I hated it. I absolutely oh, yeah. hated they, it. They made me do it, too. I, like, I think we were, like, the millennials were kind of the last one, because I don't think Nick... Uh, I don't... I, I don't think I'm not... Nick, it. I think, though, went to fancy school, so he may... Uh, all I have. all I kept was how to write my name, and that was for, like, checks and stuff. You know, like, sign your name here. That's the only thing that I kept. <laughs> And it was mostly just modeled after my dad's signature, which is, yeah. you know, sign that, like, your first name is in perfect cursive, and then you do the the first initial and then just <laughs> the rest of the way. I even yeah. just do my first initial, a bunch yeah. of squiggly lines, and then a little fancy loop, because I'm a fancy guy. Yeah. That's it. So D, yeah. a bunch of squiggles, and then you, you perfect cursive the word Marvel. <laughs> it's, it's actually C is what it starts. See, yeah. that's, that's the key. That's yeah. the key protecting your identity people have an alias use the alias don't tell people your real name my real name starts with c and that's how that works and my name <laughs> duh, sounds like a state like an alias anyway so <laughs> that's you know what that's actually really true that's that is fair they hear my name and people are like there's no way that's real I'm like yeah totally it's not i swear <laughs> yeah yeah that's like a, a lawrence welk's son yeah is a uh, or grandson flies one of the news helicopters his name his name's lawrence welk like through third or something okay and uh, evidently he was getting um gas for the helicopter at some place where they and they 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 thought it was, he was using a stolen card oh because <laughs> of the name <laughs> yeah do you think that you know this guy showed up with a helicopter it'd be kind of <laughs> likely that he'd be <laughs> yeah like that's the, the, the you, theft knows no limit yeah <laughs> but it, it's funny that like they show up like i think that credit card is stolen really not the helicopter no helicopter's fine it's the it's the credit card that's not him that's not the that's not casey Kasem or whatever like, just... <laughs> that's the thing uh, listen i so my dad he, he always went by bill right yeah. but in greek his name is vasili right yeah so, which normally you'd go by Basil, right? Mm-hmm. But the problem is that, like, so my dad came here in the early 60s. Yeah. Uh, came to Canada. And when he would, like, talk to people, they're like, oh, your name? And he's like, Basil. They're like, what? 
Basil. What? Basil. Bill. What? <laughs> huh? Bill. Oh, Bill. Yeah. And that's and he would have guys who were like 15 or or 20 years older than my dad would refer to him as William. I mean, that's oh, like no. that's not my name. Yeah. <laughs> he just. But my dad was he was like. That's the thing is, as an immigrant, it was a huge thing just to be accepted. So saying, oh, my name's Bill, people were like, oh, Bill, I know a Bill, I know seven Bills, my brother's name is Bill. It's a fairly common name, so it's it's it creates uh, easier communication. But Yeah, well, I, like, th- that's probably how it worked with, um, like, last names, right? Like, like, you know, a lot of last names are just professions, right? Like, I'm the baker. Okay, his last name's Baker, fuck it. Like... Uh, yep. or, or, or like people coming to the U.S. in the 19th century. Like my last name is Novak, and that's uh, that's um, like Russian for like newcomer or new man, which I assume happens. You know, my ancestor shows up on Ellis Island. Who are you? I'm the new guy. That's <laughs> okay. You know what? That's very possibly exactly what happened. Yeah. That's or like like that's your your great grandfather showed up to a town because yeah. he was visiting and decided to stay and they're like so now he's the new guy yeah that's it that's just and that's the origin that's it's funny that you would bring that up i yeah. just had that conversation with somebody last night yeah where they were saying how like uh your your spouse taking your name or yeah. hyphenating or something like that and you're going okay so he's like well you know i didn't think it was a big deal but now it's kind of bothering me and i go i totally understand what you're saying um and so you know, you're wrong. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, it, it means nothing. He goes, well, you know, I want people to be able to know that they were, you know, those are my grandkids or whatever. I'm like, yeah, nobody cares, man. Tell me, how many people are going to look at something amazing you do? You said, you know what I want to do? Know who that guy's granddad was. <laughs> nobody gives a shit. <laughs> yeah. Right? And that's, but that's the thing is a name, it carries a lot. And we've kind of, it's a weird thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, he's the new guy. What? He goes, what's your name? I'm Atlas New Guy. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Was there an old guy Atlas? That's the real question. That's I, what you got to find. I don't know. I mean, the the I, the idea for my name came from my mom, so technically I don't think anybody would name, like, their kids anything weird like me. Like, you know, my, my, my dad and his sibling, you know, Roger, Jan, Steve, Bill. Like, it, it's, you know, pr- pretty normal stuff. Does your stuff. mom have, have a weird name? Celeste. Yeah, that's not super weird. It's weird in the context of other siblings. Yeah, like her, her siblings were BB, Molly, Kathy, and Richard. Okay, so, so they're all weirdos. That's that's. They're weird. Yeah, the names are weird. Your name, Jean Atlas. Sorry. There, yeah. Wait, what did you say, Jim? You may have inherited a, the strange name disease. The strange name. Uh, yeah, gene. definitely. I think if I have kids, though, I can't name them a normal name. It's got to be something, like, at least a little weird, right? Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, I think Atlas is a fair, like, hey, you could always start that trend and, like, name one of them, I don't know, Agamemnon or, you know, Zeus, whatever. Name name one of them Aphrodite. The dude. Just, you're in L.A., that's fair. <laughs> I feel like if I ever uh, have kids, I, I'm going to get vetoed by... Uh, by my wife the, that would definitely better than getting vetoed by the law <laughs> yeah definitely um That's so in, uh, denmark you can't uh there are like a list of thirty thousand names and I those are your so. options yeah like, like they can just be like all right fuck you it's not <laughs> yeah they're like i don't know can't yeah. uh, do that. Yeah, imagine if there was like a really bad speller that worked at Ellis Island. How many names are just like? <laughs> no, that's definitely <laughs> that's definitely a thing. Or or, or like you can't 100%. hear. Like he doesn't quite understand what they said. Where it's like you know the. Yeah. How much you want to bet? There was like some days where like everyone's name was a variation of like Stevenson, Stevenberg, yeah. Stevenson. Yeah. Like it was just every guy. Just he's like, yeah, you're now Stevenson. Yeah. Here you go. Jefferson. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're back. Get over here. Smith. <laughs> you know, fuck it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like there are going to be waves of people whose names are not even remotely close. Yeah, it's like Friday at four forty-five p.m. He's like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It, that makes sense. Yeah. Jim, do you have, yeah. did did you ever have like while, while you were driving the bus, like just the the like kind of senioritis for like the end of your shift or whatever, like letting the guy oh. sit in the stairwell or whatever. Yeah, all the time you get, and then you like. Um, actually, another time I got in the wrong bus and started <laughs> driving. 
And then uh, <laughs> I was a Santa Barbara driver, and I was actually there's only two of us in Santa Barbara. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so I get in this bus, and then the Santa Barbara door and the and the Las Vegas door are right next to each other. So the uh, so I get in, and I just I sign out. This is the whole thing when the, we switch to the stupid. Uh, dispatch in Dallas and see the funny thing is is like when they moved the dispatch to Dallas like I could have actually drove that bus all the way to Santa Barbara but luckily I figured out when I got on the 10 freeway that I was and the people kind of go what's you know because the people I get and then I get on the PA system and I go yeah welcome to Greyhound service to Santa Barbara servicing yeah uh, Santa Monica uh, Oxnard uh, you know yeah. Ventura yeah and um then I hear this and I look up and it's there's another driver's name up on <laughs> Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like it's planes, like, trains, and automobiles. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> it, it took me quite a while. I don't think I ever lived that one down. Oh, man. <laughs> did you, hold on, but did you tell everybody, like, so, everybody, I just want to let you know I realized I've gotten onto the wrong bus, and uh, we will be returning uh, to the platform <laughs> yeah. so that we can get your proper driver. Like, uh, like in I the... hope you have a good story so you can tell your friends and uh, enjoy your trip in Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you my name because I don't want anyone to know about this. See, I'll see you later. <laughs> in, in the same, like, bus driver voice? 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I did tell him. I go, you know, I'm sorry, but um, these buses all kind of look alike, you know. That good, perfect. <laughs> if you said so that good. now, you would have been yeah. totally yeah, called a bag. Uh, Are yeah. you a bus racist? No, what no. Is it? <laughs> Fuck off. I am. <laughs> Which they do. That's why. That's why my tip I'll give you guys all: if you ride on the bus, I always look at there's on on by the door there should be a number like a four or six digit number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always look at that number. So if you do get off that bus. If like a bunch of buses stop at a bus station or they stop at a rest area or something, you'll get back on the right bus. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they do. They do. You know, they're equal, but they're they're similar in in. Uh, oh yeah. Imaging. Well, that's, that's one of the things I remember. Uh, for a while, when I was working uh, downtown Toronto, I would um, uh, sometimes I would have documents with me and stuff like that, right? And for those kind of times where I'm like, you know what, it's public transit just in case like i have a briefcase but maybe it falls apart maybe something happens i would take a photograph of the uh number on the train or the bus just so i'm like i know which bus i was on smart so if something goes missing there's camera i know exactly what bus and from what times yeah because it would just get geotagged and everything so i'm like okay this is you know that's it's it's very good advice paper trail definitely and that's the nice thing about the cameras that they have the cameras on the on the transit buses all have most most of them, I'm sure there's yeah. some that have uh, cameras and stuff, that, and they're all aligned with GPS and everything. And it's kind of kind of neat that yeah. you know, so if something something does get stolen on the bus, they can figure it out who stole it pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, and you know what? Like it's it's an important thing, right? Because the transit. This is the funny thing was I remember uh, reading up on transit how transit was originally meant for wealthy people. It wasn't meant for. Uh, uh, poor people like yeah. the idea was that no they had more important things to occupy their time mm-hmm. uh like so it was a good opportunity to read the newspaper while someone else drove you to work yeah, yeah. it was you know, that that was the idea behind it but then it just became low-cost transportation and people just you know started peeing on the bus yeah yeah I, 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 and then uh general motors buys bread card demolishes it to make the freeway system and there's the plot of who framed roger rabbit so yeah Ta-da. yeah but no it's still kind of the same because they do pour a lot more money into the uh into the commuter side of things than they do the actual, like, for people that work, like, um, you know, jobs that are shift work and stuff like that. They put a lot more money into the, uh, like, the rail system here in Los Angeles. They put they put billions of dollars into the rail system. Fucking and finally. Actually, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And they, but they, they had to get, they actually were sued because the, the rail system wasn't servicing the, the feeder areas where all these fast food restaurants and where the people that actually need the public transit or going, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and so they had to increase a lot of buses on the uh, on the things. And Santa Barbara is pretty good about the Santa Barbara has one of the best public transit systems in the in the country, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. Kind of just because I worked there for 23 years, but the um, um, you know, because it's pretty everybody you can use it it's real user friendly and um but they were for a while they were trying to they were trying to figure out a way to get people that work downtown that were driving into riding the bus yeah. and that and uh because that's where a big 
congestion comes in and then they, it's really hard to get people out of their cars in Southern California. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, I, like I would be the, the problem with the, the Metro right now in, in LA is that it's a lot of like East West, but no North South for the most part. If you like the, the ones from union station, there's one that goes into the Valley, but to get there, you got to ride the expo line, like from the West side, all the way to the end get to the end, and then hop rails and go to a different one. So it's like this big kind of V-shape almost instead of just north. Yeah. And then, yeah, God forbid, like... you got to get to the airport or something south. It, like, no, it's not happening right now. I think they're working on it. Yeah, doesn't the yeah. exposition – isn't that the – is the new subway open that goes into downtown Santa Monica? I'm sorry, I had a wisdom tooth pulled the other day. No, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. The – they were working on the expedition line, or or that goes to the, supposedly goes to the airport. I think so. Like it, it's the green line. I think they're calling it. But like, yeah, they're still working on that. They're still working on like a north south thing. The expo line goes from like the beach to Union Station, and it's just like yeah. one one straight shot going mm-hmm. east. Yeah, that's the one that goes down San Francisco, <clears throat> right? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. The uh, but yeah, then the and then like going out to the Antelope Valley and stuff. They have uh, mm-hmm. the Metro rail, but yeah, there isn't. Yeah, you're right. There yeah. isn't any kind of from the from Santa Monica over to down Union Stations kind of sparse. Yeah, when I was in college, I would take like I, I the Expo line is like walking distance from my mom's place. Walk over, hop onto it, go all the way to Union Station, and then switch trains and go to uh, UC Riverside because it was like I don't know, like a mile off of campus. So have my girlfriend at the time pick me up or uh, a friend or take the bus. And uh, your st- student ID gets you on for free. So nice. Yeah, uh, Jim, I I wanted to ask you. So y- you have a podcast where, like, I know all we talked about was like bus stuff on this. Oh episode. yeah, that, yeah. I know. So I, t- I, tell I, us a little bit about your show. Well, my show is I'm still working on my little studio here, so mm-hmm. it's uh, it's taken me a while to figure this stuff out. But uh, my show is called Writing Stories on the Bus with Jim Eaton, and it's on the Giggles Live Radio Network. Mm-hmm. And uh, where I basically talk to people about uh, driving, and uh, I'm we're going to have an Atlas on there talking about his um, as soon as I figure out how to get this all working. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's uh, where basically tell stories about different people. Like right now, the one I have now is an ice cream truck. I interviewed him about, and he's also a stand-up comedian. And then um, I have another one about a guy that uh, a guy that drives a school school vehicle that's not a bus and then and he's also a comedian but i'm basically going to talk to com- comedians and and different drivers about different stories they have the stuff that happens to them while they're driving yeah nice. um I'll, I'll link to it down in the show notes slash description oh, okay Thank so you. so that they can find you and like uh th- thanks again for coming on generation dan um well our... i appreciate it, dan and everybody here yeah none of us are named dan it's just that's what our initials line up to be yeah. Um, well, technically, yeah. Now we're uh, what is it? Uh, would be uh, JDA. DA? Yeah, JDA. <laughs> yeah. Generation JDA. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Gen- <laughs> Generation Ja. Yeah. yeah. Um, nice. do, do you have like a social media or anything you want you want people to find you on, or just the? Well, it's my name, uh, Jim Eaton. Uh, Jim Eaton at Facebook, and I think I'm Big Jim E. Big Eight O Five Jim at at um, Twitter. And um, and Instagram and all those things. I'll, so I'll, I'll, I'll find I am, I am a I am a uh, baby boomer, so I, it's hard for me to figure out all this complex uh, computer stuff. No, it's okay. But it, it's our bring first... back the dial for the yeah. phone. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Bring, I'm with I'm, you. I'm rooting for going back to dial phones. Absolutely. I know it's they so brought back fun. a flip phone for like a smartphone. They they they. Uh, yes. Android made yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And it breaks just like the first flip phone. Mm-hmm. That thing, yeah. when it broke, you could send the top launch just doo, 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 and hit somebody in the face. It's fantastic. Oh, wow. um, yeah, I still have my first. I gotta find my old. I just moved too, so I'm in this new place, and mm-hmm. I got somewhere. I have a an old the old brick phone. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Donated to a movie studio. Here, you want to make something in the '80s? There's your prop. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Dino, where can they find you? Stuff. Oh, I'm. Uh, you know what? Mostly just at, at Dino the Genetic Marvel. Uh, on my Facebook page, I post everything, so it's mostly live videos. I have a show coming up uh, September sixth at six p.m. Eastern Stan- or six p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. This will be coming uh, out after that. <laughs> oh well. 
<laughs> Generations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just my Facebook page. Oh. That's fine. Yeah, just go to uh, Dino the Genetic Marvel and uh, I post everything there. So, and I also do my personal stuff. But don't don't try and support. Don't dim my sparkle, people. Subscribe to my comedy page so I can be awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Or, or leave a like and, or, and a comment or a subscription or something. Okay, I have to take a picture if I can remember the name. Oh. <laughs> See, this is, Don't this worry. Is when I have sent you the video, it'll have all the information there, and you can just click on it. It's yeah. perfect. Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay. We are with you here. We are going to get you started. Don't yeah. worry. We, uh, you, can, you can find me at Atlas Novak, uh, Twitter, Instagram, or find my other show at Nexus at Night in the same places. Uh, Nick's not here, but you can find him at Nick Fernandez Comedy. Once again, all that stuff in the down there part. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks everybody for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.